Good morning. This is Dr. Jagoda at Mount Sinai in New York City, and I'd like to welcome our guests from around the world who are uh, calling in and joining us for a session on hospital crowding uh, at Tale of Four Cities. I think this is a very exciting opportunity for all of us to work globally to understand the practice of emergency medicine and challenges that I think that we are all uh, facing worldwide. And in order to accomplish that, I'll be joined by uh, several uh, uh, panelists. Next slide. Our speakers today are going to be myself, representing New York, USA. And then I'll also be joined by Eric Revue from uh, uh, Chart France. And then I'll be joined by Gustavo Hein from Clinica Alemana in Santiago, Chile. And then I'll be joined by Xavier Jimenez from Barcelona, Spain. Each of our speakers has a unique perspective on healthcare and we'll be working together to dissect our perspectives and perhaps learn from each other. Next slide. <clears throat> Before we begin, we need to thank uh, two unique individuals, Santiago uh, Brandes from Spain and Eduardo Lacal from the United States. Uh, it's the two of them working together who helped organize and conceive today's program. I'd also like to thank Stephanie Williford from Emergency Medicine Practice who, for making available the educational materials that can be downloaded um, for free. Next slide. So, this all began when one of my uh, residents, Eduardo Lacal, uh, began asking questions. And he asked questions that I didn't know the answer to. So these questions uh, formed the base. Eduardo went to Barcelona, he met Santi, and they began exploring the questions of crowding. And here are the questions. Is emergency department and hospital crowding a unique American problem, or is it a worldwide phenomenon? Are the causes of crowding unique to each country, or are there similarities between systems? Are countries with social health care infrastructures at less risk of emergency department and hospital crowding than other systems, for example, the United States? And this is a question I'm particularly interested in and will be listening very carefully because, as we all know, uh, the United States system has a weak primary care infrastructure, and how much does that contribute to our crowding problem? And are there lessons that we can learn from each other that will impact the quality of care we provide our patients. Next slide. So we can't begin a, uh, a uh, seminar on crowding without trying to define it, but I'll tell you already the definitions vary uh, worldwide, and that's of course one of the factors that contributes uh, to some of the difficulties with research on this area. Simply, it's a situation where more patients uh, are in the emergency department than can be safely treated. But there's two key words that fit into crowding, and the next definition helps us a little more. A situation where the emergency department cannot meet the demand for services and is unable to provide a safe environment where quality care can be provided to patients presenting with urgent and emergent conditions. So you could have an emergency department that's filled with patients who don't have urgent emergent conditions and they wouldn't necessarily be crowded. But when the number of patients are interfering with our ability to provide stabilizing and resuscitative care, we have a major health care issue that impacts not only our staffs, but more important, our patients and their outcomes. A number of scales have been developed to try and help us define um, crowding, but in the end, I think we can all agree, those of us who work in emergency departments, we all can feel when it's crowded. We know it when we see it. Next slide. The crowding literature has been mounting over the last years, and when I Google searched crowding, uh, emergency department crowding, I 
had 1,760,000 hits. So there's a lot of people writing and talking about crowding. If we go back over 20 years ago, uh, the literature was starting to gain some momentum. And at that time, everyone was referring to emergency department crowding. But I can tell you the evolution has been it's no longer emergency department crowding, but it's hospital crowding. And so one of the things we'll be exploring in the next hour is the link between all the various domains in our healthcare system. Next slide. The Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality came out with a very important document here in the States, but this document reflects the state of knowledge of crowding worldwide. The literature is telling us that indeed crowding that's confronting us in our emergency departments and the hospital is greatly impacting care, and it's leading to medication errors and delay in medications. It's leading to delay in diagnoses, delay in treatment, and we have a growing literature that's showing us that the crowding situation, not surprisingly, is having an impact on outcomes and an impact on mortality. It's costing us money. It's costing us lives. It's compromising the image of our healthcare systems in our communities that trust us and have confidence in our ability to deliver them the care that they deserve. And the one thing that's evolving and one of the messages that we'll be ending today's seminar on uh, with is that emergency department crowding is a manifestation and reflection of hospital crowding, and it's only by improving flow throughout our healthcare systems that we can address this crisis. Next slide. And so from a simple point of view, we think of hospital or emergency department flow with the input, throughput, output model. Unfortunately, this is a very simplistic model. It's a good framework for us to begin analyzing our component to the crowding problem, our meaning emergency medicines component. But what this model doesn't take fully into account is the whole healthcare system, meaning what takes place in the community that causes patients to come to the emergency department, and what takes place in the hospital that obstructs the outflow of our patients. Next slide. And so as we begin modeling, and I know uh, you can't see this slide clearly, I put it up simply to reflect it's a complex system, and complex systems need complex solutions, and therefore those solutions must be arrived at through multidisciplinary groups that are empowered to address the whole system and not an individual component. We do not refer to emergency department crowding as a unique item any longer, nor is it specifically emergency department related. We refer to crowding as a healthcare system crisis. Next slide. And so we'll dissect down into the causes of emergency department crowding. Next slide. And our objectives today then are to examine crowding from the perspective of three continents, four cities, North America, South America, and Europe. Based on today's success, perhaps we'll begin exploring healthcare crisis in other parts of the world. We'll define the scope of the crowding problem in each of four cities will identify potential solutions, and most important, we're going to identify areas in need of research to begin the process of solving the problem. Next slide. And so I'll begin by discussing the current situation at Mount Sinai uh, in New York City. The slide shows you that uh, our hospital sits on the Upper East Side of New York on Central Park. It bridges two communities, a very rich community on Park Avenue and a relatively poor community, East Harlem. Next slide. The hospital is a quaternary care hospital with large specialty and subspecialty services, though we have 1,171 beds, 
650 are medical surgical and the others are for other specialties. The hospitals designed in 1985, our projected volume was 35,000. Our volume this year will be 105,000. So this alone defines to you we have a problem. In the past, we knew we had a problem, but as we know as scientists, without d data, we can't define the problem, and if we can't define it, we can't solve it. The point is there were no national benchmarks until recently to help us identify best practice. Next slide. This are two shots of my emergency department. And what you're seeing are patients lined up in chairs. I don't think this is an unusual uh, uh, scene for an American urban emergency department. Maybe it's unique for my colleagues in France and Spain and Santiago, Chile. We'll find out. And if you look at the slide on, on your right, you'll see a space that's designed for one patient. And you'll see that there's four patients in this area taking care of acute emergent patients. Next slide. And so nationally, we have this problem because we have aging populations, they have complex medical problems, and we have complex social needs. In America, it's a particular problem that it's difficult sometimes getting patients back to their home where there's no one to care for them. But there's two myths that we need to dispel from the beginning. And number one, the majority of patients being seen in American emergency departments are insured. They are insured. They have access to health care. Why are they coming to the emergency department? Because they have urgent and emergent problems. The main areas of our emergency department are caring for sick patients. At Mount Sinai, we're admitting 40% of our adult patients in the main emergency department. ED visits continue to increase in the United States despite a decrease in beds. And in the last 10 years, we've lost 8,000 ICU beds across the United States. We've lost 250,000 hospital beds. At Mount Sinai in Manhattan alone, in the last eight years, four hospitals have closed, contributing to our 8% growth per year in volume. The healthcare network at Mount Sinai has expanded, increasing transfer patients who need the inpatient beds. Hospital stays over 92% full, and once you're over 85, 86% capacity in the hospital, you lose flexibility in patient movement. And there's increased availability and increased expectation for diagnostic testing up front in the emergency department because we're good, we're efficient, and there's no place that can deliver more care faster than our departments. And so part of the problem of crowding is simply that emergency medicine as a specialty has just been too good in supporting the healthcare system. Next slide, in my opinion. This slide, I'm sorry, it might look busy, but this is the most important slide that I'll show in my in my talk, in the last eight years, the Emergency Medicine Benchmarking Alliance has been created. And so for the first time, we're generating data that defines best practice. About 20% of emergency departments in America belong to this alliance. 970 emergency departments provide their metrics. 65 of the hospitals have volumes over 80,000 per year. So if I'm going to benchmark my practice, I need similar hospitals. In other words, I need hospitals seeing volumes similar to mine. So if we take those 65 hospitals, we can be begin comparing their benchmarks, their numbers with ours. And this metrics are what I can use at my own hospital to define the challenges confronting us. So benchmark-wise, hospitals of similar size have 62 beds. My hospital in 2007 and still in 2012, despite continued growth from 89 or 88,000 to 101,000, has the same number of beds, 41. The interesting metric that's evolving in emergency medicine literature isn't number of beds because we're squeezing more and more patients into smaller and smaller spaces. 
but the visits per square foot per year. If you take that number, it begins to equalize all departments. And based on my department's size, we are seeing over double per square foot the volume with 3.7 patients per square foot on the average of the benchmarked hospitals. And we're seeing 6.3 in 2007, my volume's grown, 6.8 last year. My nurse to patient ratio Physicians don't tend to be the short commodity in emergency departments. It's the team, it's the workforce needed to carry out so much of the care. Benchmark one nurse to four to six patients in 2007 and still in 2008. I am one to eight and I reach one to 12, one nurse per 12 patients at any one time. And clearly this is going to interfere with my throughput or the efficiency that I can process patients with. Length of stay is three hours and six minutes for patients treated and released nationally. In 2007, I was at three hours, and at 2012, I'm at three hours and 25 minutes despite the increase in volume. What this is telling you is we've been fairly efficient with the systems that I'm going to describe in managing those patients who need to be treated and released. But if you look at the length of stay of admitted patients, nationally it's six hours. And at my hospital, we hit 11 hours before patients were sent upstairs. And that's a metric that's telling me that the hospital's crowded and consequently my department's crowded. So my left without being treated nationally is 3%. I'm at 3% here at Mount Sinai. And if you look at hours of diversion, not surprisingly, it's going up. These metrics describe a system that, that is really taking care of emergent patients who can go home and is inefficiently taking care of patients who need to be. Next slide. And as further reflection of the problem, it's not just the emergency department in my hospital. Labor and delivery actually has been going on diversion more than ever before. OR cases are being canceled, and our OR cases are being delayed because they can't get patients out of the operating rooms into recovery because the recovery room's full because there's no floor beds. It's a system-wide crisis. It can only be addressed by getting the whole system engaged. Next slide. And so we've looked at the three components in the traditional sense. Our input, we have tried bedside registration, but we failed because there's no bedside because the patients are so crowded in the department. We've tried triaging patients out to clinics, but our system doesn't have a strong clinic infrastructure. We have succeeded in triaging out 10% of our pediatric patients which gave us a benefit in 2010 and 11, and in 2012, we were saturated once again. Our most successful initiative has been creating a triage intake area, similar to what other hospitals have described, where a physician at intake sees patients and initiates care, and it's because of that our time to doctor has actually decreased our patient satisfaction has improved, but it hasn't changed our overall ED length of stay. Next slide. From a throughput point of view, we've initiated point of care testing. We've uh, initiated a CAT scan dedicated to the emergency department in the emergency department. We've protocolized CAT scans. What's happened is our number of CAT scans ordered have increased 20%, and they've impacted the care of 30% of those patients cared for, reflecting the high acuity of the patients that we're taking care of. We've tried to redesign our nursing team, but because of the high stress and yet another part of the crisis, 10% of my nurses last year quit and moved out of emergency medicine or emergency nursing. We've expanded fast track, but that isn't the bottleneck. And starting next year, we'll have a 20-bed observation unit, which hopefully will decant some of the volume. Next slide. 
And so our output has been our biggest challenge. And we initiated a pilot study where we have promoted early discharges simultaneously discharging the patient at the same time, calling housekeeping, transport, and nursing report. And we decreased ED length of stay by two hours for admitted patients. However, despite the success of this pilot, it's yet to be fully implemented through the hospital because in, of the change in culture this would require, and the hospital culture hasn't yet been ready to change. Most important, the hospital has recognized the need for oversight of the whole flow process, and we are currently recruiting a vice president of hospital flow, which will be directly responsible for all components related to hospital capacity in caring for patients. And we've initiated a surge policy where floors go over census, when we reach a crisis point. Next slide. And so in summary, from the New York point of view, crowding is a major operational issue, and the good news is it's been recognized as a hospital and not emergency department only problem. Leadership this year, 2013, has identified hospital crowding as, as its priority to address. This is a major change in culture uh, for the institution I work at. The new vice president position hopefully will be filled within the next three months, and I'm hoping that's going to herald a new era of patient care. And all I can tell you is next year, come back, and hopefully we'll be discussing and showing new metrics that demonstrate the impact of some of these initiatives. Next slide. And so with that um, demonstrating the New York experience, I'd like to now introduce uh, Dr. Review in France to talk about uh, the situation that describes the French experience. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Dakuda. It's a very interesting uh, talk you made, and uh, we have uh, our colleague here from from uh, Sharp. We have almost the same situation that you have in New, in New York, but despite we don't have the same number of ED visits that we have. But anyway, we can uh, talk about the situation of uh, of uh, France first, and in our emergency department. Uh, next slide, please. So here in France, the main problem we had for uh, the last 10 years is we had now a rising number of ED visits in 10, 10 years, and the do we doubled the number by, by the 50%, the number of ED visits everywhere in, in France. If the main problem we had, it's not the situation only in Sharp, but we had the same situation in Paris and all the EDs in France. As we have this rising number of uh, ED visits, it was uh, the number of ED visits everywhere with uh, uh, pediatrics too, and even uh, in Paris. And we will see that it was closely to the main uh, problem of the number of beds that we had to find. So in the last uh, 10 years, the, we rise by 50%, and this, with the 17% of the mixed uh, patient in the hospital. Uh, as you know, we have a, a French emergency medical system called SAMU, where we have a dispatch call center, uh, as you have a medical advice with the emergency physician on the phone, and 30% uh, of the emergency call are just for medical advice, and it may for prevent patient to, for going directly to the hospital. Uh, next slide, please. The problem is uh, in France, actually, we just have the emergency medicine specialty. 
uh, since 2004, but we don't have enough young doctors who are working. And as we have a lack of general practitioners, we, the mean age is 50 years old, we have the mean uh, holding uh, emergency physician now in our ED with the rising number of ED visits. And with the number of hospitals, as you have the same situation in, in New York, uh, we still have a reducing number of, uh, of beds in our, in our hospital. Uh, the problem is, too, that uh, we don't have, uh, even we have an efficient uh, emergency medical system with pre hospital, we have an overcrowding problem everywhere in France. And in the last few, uh, few weeks, we have um, uh, some uh, emergency physicians working in emergency department who want to be on strike because of the situation of overcrowding. And uh, uh, the, our health um, uh, minister decided to make a big problem and a big problem to, to fight this uh, overcrowding problem in France. So maybe next year we will have some uh, solution to, to this problem. Uh, as uh, we have, we used uh, the system of uh, uh, pre-hospital. We have some situation in Paris, for instance, where you have a patient with an MI and they, the ambulance with the, with the patient working for one hour, two hour outside of the, of the, of in Paris before finding uh, ICU to, to the patient. Uh, that's a typical situation that happens a few years ago and they decide to change a lot of things in Paris but everywhere in France. Uh, the next slide please. That's the situation in, in Chartres, in our emergency department. We have a new uh, emergency department since uh, 2007, and actually we don't have 100,000 patients for a, a year. We have only 40,000 uh, patients a year of uh, ED visits, and we have 10,000 uh, uh, 10, for pediatric visits, but uh, it's uh, in a different uh, way. On the uh, right part of the slide, that's the number of patients that's uh, coming on 24 hours. And the same curve, you find it, I think you have the same everywhere in the world, and especially in New York, our uh, patients are still coming at 8 o'clock uh, a.m. And we have uh, the maximum of the uh, patient in our ED at noon. And the number of ED visits still uh, decrease at uh, 8, 8 p.m. In the back of the slides, you have the length of stay. It was uh, on 2008, it was 4 hours and 40 minutes. And this length of stay decided to uh, increase with the problem of overcrowding. And at the, in 2011, the length of stay was the more than 8 hours and 30 minutes, with patients staying on strips and on hallways. That was the main problem and the main challenge we have to fight in our emergency departments. Next slide. So, uh, as we analyze the same situation in France and everywhere, in uh, you share this uh, slide in the three part of inputs. The as we have, despite we have a very good uh, health system in France, we still have an increased number of ED visits even for non-urgent uh, problem, but it's closely uh, uh, near the situation of uh, GPs that we have less than uh, 300 GPs for 1,000 inhabitants. So we, we, it's uh, the main problem we have, we will have a rising number of patients in our ED for the next years. Uh, for majority of the patients, it's very quick to, to go and to be in this ID the, the emergency departments, but most of the time they feel that it's a free of charge service. But now we know that the main problem we will have, that's the, the hospital and the emergency department is the only way now to treat patients. And we have a lot of elderly patients now. It's the, the main problem, we have older and older patients and uh, it, they cannot stay at home and have to to go and direct the hospital. 
especially for problem situation that uh, end of life uh, situation that uh, could uh, be a, a big challenge for us. Uh, for the throughput, we, we know that uh, most of the time patients stay for more than uh, stay for hours on straight uh, in the in the, the the hospital, and the the problem is that we know that uh, a patient aged more than 70 years old, it's uh, the admission rate is uh, probably 60 or 70 percent. So we cannot uh, send the patient at home most of the time with these kind of patients. So uh, as uh, we we talk about the situation. As we have a decreasing number of, um, of beds, the problem is we have a num huge number of patients, very old, and we have to find a bed for them. And that's the main job we have, is to find a bed, and the nurses are spending hours to find a bed. We have uh, another situation with the working time directive, uh, since we have the French law of 35 hours, if for a GP, uh, for an emergency physician, it could be 80 hours for working in an emergency department. So maybe we don't have enough personnel in our emergency department. And uh, we try to have uh, to manage, like maybe we we'll have speak about in Spain, but how to manage to have patient at home because at the the, the the, the, the hospital is overcrowded, so we send patients at home as we shouldn't. Next slide. Yeah, when we analyze the factor of our crowding, when we had, in, and what's the solution we found in our emergency department? Uh, next, please. You can put all the, the lines here. We didn't have any uh, triage no procedure for dispatching. So we tried to, the first step, we tried to, to fight the overcrowding problem in our hospital. It was fighting uh, the throughputs. And as we didn't have any procedures, we tried to work and to work on the observation unit and the length of stay in this observation unit. Uh, we tried to work on the short, uh, short track and a fast track and uh, using uh, uh, ma new management for the emergency department. Next, next slide. Well, the first rule we decided it was an elderly on the stretcher for several hours at an abuse, and we couldn't accept this situation. That was the main main uh, objective we decided. Uh, next, please. Uh, next. So the main main challenge is to have no patients on stretchers staying in the hallway. And uh, we, we, just, we worked on the fluidity of the, the, on the flow and inside the emergency department on the throughputs. Next. And we decide uh, to, sit, to pick, keep patients in the vertical position and the a maximum of patients not, uh, not lying on the, on the stretcher because we did know that it would be uh, an acute mobility for this kind of patients. We, uh, we turned the observation unit that was for a long time, it was a, a, me a medicine ward with uh, more than uh, five or six days of the length of stay. We reduced this length of stay to 24 hours and tried to cut down the users and uh, uh, using protocols to not use uh, ID lines and blood samples. Next. And uh, working of a throughput, we used the lean process for that. Uh, we tried to have all, more than one, it could be two beds now, uh, it should be available uh, for all our times in the ED to, to help uh, the triage team to work on it. And as the, the UK decision that made and, uh, for the national health problem, uh, the delay of four hours in, inside the UED, we have to take a decision uh, to admit uh, the patient or not, or living at home. Next. Next slide. Yeah. So we work on the, these uh, three, three main objectives. Uh, that was uh, that, yeah, working on the input with a triage nurse, and we put an emergency physician 
he is uh, working uh, in the pre-hospital emergency medicine, so he's a very good team working with the four, uh, five uh, level of uh, severity of triage. And as uh, the non-urgent problem inside the ED are uh, maybe 10 to 15 uh, part of the, of the patient, all these patients have to keep outside of the ED by the triage team. And uh, uh, only 5%, it's uh, level 1, uh, we put the patient on, in the shock room, so it represents every day one or two patients per day. Uh, where we have to make CPR, it could be treat uh, a stroke, an MI, a seizure, we put them in the shock room. So we have to work on the throughput for the 80% of the patients uh, inside the ED on level 2, 3 or 4. So the working of the procedures for using point of care testing for a, a lab test and the CD, uh, CD scan, for instance, because we know that we can work on it. We worked uh, at least for the output because as we changed the uh, short stay unit or observation units, we have um, 16 beds now. And it takes only uh, with the length of stay uh, of uh, 24 hours in this uh, part of the emergency department, we can keep uh, the half part of the admission of the patient inside the hospital. And most of the time, uh, the mean age of these patients is uh, almost 70 or 75 years old because as I told you, the main problem is uh, for this kind of patient are very old, we can take and we can find uh, a place inside the, the hospital for them. So we work on it on these three parts of the ED2 try to fight, and we succeed in that way. Next slide, please. Yeah, that's the, the way as we work uh, actually on the, uh, inside the emergency department. The triage nurse and uh, uh, the triage team work, and as uh, I told you, uh, only the level one at, uh, in the triage, we can uh, immediate CPR, uh, we put those patients inside the, the ED, and the, the old part, the cycle, it's a, we don't want to have uh, elderly patients and patients stay inside the, the, the ED for more than four hours, uh, especially on stretcher. So with, the, as you see, we have a ward for lying patient that we use. It's uh, nine beds in this, uh, in this uh, part of the ED. And um, it's a step-by-step -step, uh, procedure to, to protocols and to put the patients. And with the, uh, mostly it, it works 24 hours a day. So we can have, uh, we don't have any patient now in, um, in the on straighter. Next slide, please. And uh, we work on it, it's a uh, number, we try to decrease the number of patients staying inside uh, at what time inside the ED. And as you s see on the curve, the, uh, on the top, we have uh, 30 to 50 patients uh, staying inside the ED at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning. We reduce this, uh, this, the number of patients at less than uh, 20%. As we try to be this way to uh, the lead process to work on it, we decrease uh, the number of patients staying uh, a long time inside the ED. Next slide. And uh, that's the data we had in 2012. As we start to make this process, despite the uh, increasing number of ED visits, the the, the length of stay uh, start to decrease since March, and now in May, since May we still have now this uh, length of stay to three hours and 13 minutes uh, now in our ED with this uh, process. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, so in uh, five months, uh, we decreased by 50% the land of stay inside the ED by this process. That was really, really um, good success for us 
It's not enough because we do have a main objective, uh, especially for elderly patients. Okay, next slide. And when you compare uh, the last five years of the length of stay inside the ED, as you see the curve uh, during one year in 2008 to, to 11, now we have a, a length of stay which is quite acceptable for our patient. But it was really a hard job to, to see because as you see the length of stay in 2011 was very, very bad, more than eight hours inside. Uh, next please. So, and you can put all the lines, please. Uh, as we, we use this uh, new uh, process, we work not only on the input because we cannot prevent patients from coming inside the ED because we know that we don't have the choice to have these patients. We try to focus on the flow and the um, uh, reduction of the, the, the re re decrease in the number of patients inside the ED with the team triage uh, was a very useful uh, uh, tool we, we have. And uh, with the, we use all the team of the working inside the emergency department. And uh, it was not enough because we asked all the hospital, and here with me I have the chief of the uh, intensivist, uh, Dr. Calfon Kino, he worked on it with me to, in, to have the participation of all the hospital particularly administration to have a bed manager and to work on it to have more and more beds because uh, and to have to reduce the length of stay inside the wall and medical ward inside the, the the hospital we try to implement that it will be in the next month uh, mobile geriatric unit inside the ED because we have a lot of uh, elderly patients. So we, with this unit, we hope that we could prevent patients uh, to work, that they could stay at home. Uh, we don't work uh, a lot with uh, surgical wards, but more with medical wards, because that's, uh, we try to adapt our work to the, situ to the uh, data of our patients. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you uh, so much for, for you. and. Uh, for the next speaker. Thank you. That, that was, it, let's see, Eduardo, is this one? Yes. That was excellent, and I'm fascinated by the similarities between our systems. Our next speaker is Gustavo Hein from Santiago, Chile. Barcelona. Actually, I've just been told that our next speaker is uh, Javier Jimenez from Barcelona, Spain. Hello, can you hear me, Dr. Yagoda? That's, that's yes, I, I can hear you, and uh, indeed we've gone yet uh, back to another continent. We're in Santiago, Chile. Well, hello, this is Gustavo Hein speaking. Uh, I'm here to uh, give this talk, but these are the Spanish uh, slides, I think. It's Barcelona slides. Uh, I need the previous presentation in green, please. The third one, yeah. Okay, good morning everyone and good afternoon in Europe. Uh, this is uh, Clinic Alemana speaking. Um, we uh, really thank you for this great opportunity to uh, come uh, on the website with you on real time and uh, it's great to see that we all have the same problems as you will see in our presentation. We have uh, the same data and the same problems that uh, we have heard from you so far. So um, the first thing I w would like to point out is that uh, uh, Chile is a 17 million inhabitants country. Uh, we have 80% um, of uh, those uh, inhabitants uh, covered by a um, 
public medical insurance. So they are seen and go to public hospitals. Um, and many of those hospitals have uh, crowded, very crowded emergency departments, and uh, they have uh, almost no beds available for output. So many of uh, our uh, Chilean population are uh, moving to, to get some private insurances and go to private hospitals uh, to be seen because of medical problems. So uh, we as a private hospital are covering those uh, patients, private insured patients that are uh, accounting for about 90% of our uh, input every year. So Clinica Alemana is a 400 bed hospital founded uh, at the beginning of the last century in uh, Santiago. Uh, we serve a population of our, about seven to 800 people in this side of the capital city of Chile. And we are, uh, so to say, competing for this uh, community with other three big uh, private hospitals in the same area. Next slide, please. Um, we are a level one uh, trauma center. We have uh, 28,000 uh, inpatients every year discharged from the hospital. We have uh, little more than 2,200 uh, thousand ambulatory patients every year. Uh, we perform uh, more than 27,000 surgeries, major surgeries every year, including heart surgery and uh, liver transplant and all that. And uh, as we said, uh, we serve a little more than 750 7,500 uh, community here in this area, northeast area of Santiago. Next slide, please. So uh, our emergency department is uh, a small department. We need to uh, uh, get a newer one as soon as possible. We have 52 beds. Uh, we had uh, only 42 pets till, till uh, the mid of uh, 2012, and then the administration gave us another 10 beds because we were really crowded at that point. And uh, we, see, we saw 116,000 patients uh, last year. Uh, we have a different setting, I would say, than the one that you described. We are just uh, starting to learn and move uh, towards uh, emergency physicians and emergency nurses taking care of emergency ED patients in our country. We just started our own, uh, own um, emergency um, medicine program two years ago, so we are starting this year with our two the first year three residents. So we have um, specialists today in our ED. We have pediatricians internists and uh, emergency specialists taking care of adults. We have general surgeons, two of them uh, during day shifts and one uh, during the night. And we have orthopedic surgeons uh, in our department taking care of our patients. We are moving slowly to uh, replace all these specialists with emergency physicians, but this would take us, I would say, 20 more years. We have a very low 6.8% uh, admission rate every year, so we contributed with 7,800 hospitalizations last year to the hospital. Next slide, please. Uh, we implemented a four-level triage. This is a modification of the five-level triage of the Canadian experience. This is done by a registered nurse in our admission set setting. Uh, the level one is a red severe critical patient with vital risk. We take care, immediate, uh, immediate care of, of, of these patients. They don't wait in any minute uh, at the waiting room or most of them are uh, coming into the ED uh, with our EMS system that we own. Uh, the level two patients are orange acute critical patients that they shouldn't be waiting more than 10 minutes in the waiting area. And then we have level three and four, which are non-critical, non-emergent patients, and this will be, this is our main problem. We have 
um, a big demand of non-critical, non-urgent patients, uh, and that's level three and level four are 80% of our yearly demand. Next slide, please. Uh, as you, you can see here, we are growing up uh, at a rate of 20% every year. So that's a big, big problem for us because we are not having enough space and beds and rooms and beds in the hospital to take care of uh, the projected demand for this year. Uh, with this 20% uh, in growth, we will come to approximately 130 or 100,000 patient this year, so that will be a big, big problem, especially now during uh, June and July with uh, the winter season in our country. The peak uh, uh, month for us, strangely, is uh, always November. We saw 12,000 patients last November. So what we are trying to do here is to put on a system to predict and anticipate the demand and uh, most important of all, to say to the administration every day how many beds we are going to need tomorrow so they can spare these beds for the ED and um, help us with the output. That's not all the time the cases you can imagine. Next slide, please. Okay, this is a curve. Uh, I saw the similar curve in, the, in our uh, French speaker. You know, this is uh, our demand starts around 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, has a peak around noon, and then stays uh, with high level demand till 9, 10 o'clock in the evening and start falling down around 11 o'clock at night. So, uh, what we are trying to do here is to um, take care of these patients by um, trying to uh, low the time they wait in the waiting area. That's a very, very important uh, point for our patients. You know, they want to come in, have a fast and quick uh, medical and nurse attention and go home. Next slide, please. Our peak day is, uh, I don't know if you have the same problem, but it's Monday all the time. We see more than 400 patients every Monday, or Tuesday if we have a free Monday, what we call a super Tuesday. Okay, so this is the curve that we saw during uh, 2012. So we have uh, special uh, reinforced staff on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Saturdays. Next slide, please. Uh, the factors uh, influencing our flow and stopping our flow uh, are the high demand on the input of uh, non-critical patients, non-urgent or non-emergent patients. Uh, our staff contributes that to uh, trying to figure out what the patients have with this big, big hospital in the back, um, asking for any tests or any images that you can imagine, and we are trying to work on that with uh, special protocols. Next slide, please. This 24-hour uh, demand, we are trying to staff with uh, special teams coming in in different uh, hours of the day to cover uh, the number of uh, staff, medical staff and nurses that we need. Next slide, please. These uh, are the numbers for uh, last year. Uh, to the left, you can see the adults, uh, a number of patients that we saw, internists and uh, emergency physicians took care of those patients. Then comes the pediatric demand, which is very high, 22,000 patients. The orthopedic surgeons, see a lot of them too, and the surgical uh, demand is uh, increasing every year too. Next slide, please. So what we did uh, several years ago, we made a study to... Uh, uh, figure out how many doctors and how many nurses we need. So in, uh, in bars, you can see the staff uh, put over the line graphic on the demand. And what we do now is to have enough medical and nurses uh, to take care of these patients and uh, 
uh, accomplish uh, with uh, the indicators that we set for uh, mean time and extended time for our uh, ED visits. Next slide, please. Um, many of our patients go to images. 34% of all the images that the emergency department in our hospital sees every year comes from our emergency department, which, which is a real a lot of um, patients. And uh, we are building, I hope, a new building for our new ED in the next two years. And we um, ask and are authorized to have an image department inside the ED. Next slide, please. You can see here the number of uh, different uh, x-rays, CD scan, and ultrasound that we have. Ultrasound is a very, very demanded um, uh, image examination in our staff. So next slide, please. You can see here the number of uh, ultrasounds asked for our uh, physicians. So what we did is to put two ultrasound suites inside the ED with one uh, um, um, radiologist doing the, all this uh, test every day. Next slide, please. 71% of our patients get a lab um, a test and they have to wait between one and a half and two and a half hours to get the results back, which is, which is a big problem. We don't have point of care. It's it's a difference we have with the lab administration. We can talk about that later. Next slide, please. So we um, have worked with the images and lab uh, head of the departments and asked us them for a maximum response time. And we measured that every day. And we talk about this. Uh, to get this um, maximal times for our patients of the ED. For lab test, 30 minutes for the most critical uh, lab tests, X-ray and ultrasound, 30 minutes, and CD scan, one hour. We are coming to, in 80% of the cases, I would say, when uh, are not in peak hours, we um, go with these figures and it's okay, but sometimes, at the middle of the afternoon, we can wait for two, two and a half, and a half hours for a CD scan. We don't have point of care, as uh, I pointed out previously. Next slide, please. Uh, we have done many things to facilitate our ED flow. As uh, we said, uh, first of all, talk to the images group and to the lab group, and, and they are working with us uh, trying to load down their time response for these examinations. And uh, one of the critical points that we would like to bring to this table is that uh, we included uh, two, day, two years ago um, four nurses to our staff that take care uh, in every shift only about the continuity of care. They don't see patients. They just are taking care of what are this patient waiting for, what are this patient needing now, and this helped us very much on, uh, you know, helping the um, attending physician and the attending nurse uh, getting rid of getting out of this uh, big coordination problems that we had. So that helped us uh, a lot on uh, facilitating our ED flow. We have uh, now one of these registered uh, nurses in continuity of care uh, job every shift per specialty. One in pediatrics, one in orthopedic surgery, one in surgery, and one in adults care. Next slide, please. Uh, our community of patients have uh, uh, critical problems and uh, away from our hospital, so we had to uh, uh, bring in um, hospital-based EMS, which we own. We tried to buy this service, but we couldn't find a, a service that uh, would uh, respond in, in the appropriate time about this. So uh, we are uh, working two and a half years now uh, with this EMS system. 
We saw we had the 3,000 EMS operations last year with a 41% admission rate. So it contributes uh, also to the hospital occupancy, and it's probably impacting our uh, lack of uh, beds too. Next slide, please. These are some indicators uh, putting uh, uh, in our ED to um, the limit uh, time waiting in, in the waiting area is uh, 30 minutes maximum for 90% of the patients every year. Uh, door, door to doctor time, 90% should be seen by a doctor in less than 40 minutes. The throughput max time should be in the 90% of them no more than two hours. Uh, the time for admission, this is an indication of our medical director, should be for ICU 30 minutes if uh, the bed is available, and uh, for um, low care beds one hour if the bed is available. We have also, as uh, you mentioned, in our hospital uh, lack of a number of beds, so um, sometimes we don't get these figures done. So, next slide, please. Um, we have 3.2% uh, of annual ED patients waiting for admission, boarding for from 4 to 12 hours in our uh, ED. Next slide, please. We get from our patients some quality indicators. Uh, the patient satisfaction is for us very important, and we uh, measure that, and the patients are, are unsatisfied and the, um, the rate for that shouldn't be more than 0.3% every year. The future problems that we see is that the permanent annual growth of demand and 20%, as I mentioned, are going to collapse our system if we don't grow up very fast. We don't have more capacity to see the number of patients that we should see this year. Uh, the number of beds, the critical beds, for, uh, are a really uh, big, big point for us, and we, are, we have every day two, three patients in the morning waiting for a critical or intermediate bed uh, to left our ED. Um, our administration is aware of all these problems, and they will start building a new construction for a new emergency department in 2014. The Santiago Medical Public System is another story, and uh, I don't have time to address that, but uh, as I mentioned before, uh, they have the same problems. The output problem there is a very, very big um, issue. They don't have the number of beds that they need, they needs, and uh, the beds are not always available because they have uh, surgical patients and medical chronic patients uh, that have a rate of 10 to 13 days hospitalized. So we could talk about in probably another session or in another moment. Next slide, please. That's it, Al. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was excellent. And yet another perspective on emergency care and some of the challenges, a lot for us to discuss. I wish we had more time for an open forum. Our last speaker is uh, in Barcelona, uh, Javier Jimenez, and we'll now hear about the Barcelona ex experience. Welcome, Spain. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. Uh, Europe, uh, good morning to, to American people. We uh, uh, explain, I, um, first of all, I, we, I agree the, the opportunity to, to explain our experience in, in this week meeting. And a special thanks to, to Santiago for your, your invitation for participating in this, in this, uh, in this meeting. Uh, I, I start to explain the uh, next slide, please. Uh, Catalonia is a, a small. This slide, please. The first. The, thank you. The Catalonia is the a first can, a little country in the east of Spain, 
she, uh, we have uh, four, five, uh, 50 thousand square kilometers and, ha and has 7.6 million inhabitants. Uh, its capital is Barcelona. Half of the population of Catalonia lives in, in the metro area. And we have 9,700 9, acute hospital beds. We have uh, 50 credit in, in ED and we receive 2.2 million ED visits per year. Next slide, please. <coughs> Uh, Robert Wood Jones Foundation says uh, either overcrowding is caused by a complex set of conditions that occur across hospital units and across the entire healthcare system. Inability to move admitted patients from the ED to the appropriate inpatient units stand out as a major driver of ED overcrowding. Uh, we think this statement is exactly applied to Catalonia. In, in 2008, the interior program of all, I next slide, please. In 20, in 20, thank you. In 2008, the integrated program for hospital ED overcrowding started at health department with three main sets of actions. First of all, prevention actions, like vaccination programs, population information and advice, about available health care service and if it's necessary providing them a home visit or referring them to the appropriate ambulatory care and specific measures at the system and hospital level. Next slide, please. It's a very useful instrument for that table, assessment and planning concerning emergency care delivered across health care centers. A daily online update system by CITON, data from hospital and primary health care facility, as well as the hospital emergency systems, and epidemiological information. Allowant adaptation to decisional and anticipated volume increase, and directors alerts by telephone and him. Uh, this next slide, please. Uh, Sadiao, can you help me? The, can you can you explain this this race, please? Well, I'll try because uh, I can't see it uh, very well. I think uh, it's a problem. It should be a heart in the middle. It is just playing like uh, with uh, our uh, circul circulation circulatory system. That's it. That's better. Thank you. Uh, and uh, it's a sort of playing comparing circulation and our model of emergency uh, system, uh, what it is happening. And it's, it's very similar, in fact, because we have, uh, in, when it comes to heart failure, we must decrease volume, preload, and uh, in the uh, emergency or urgency system or visits, we must decrease number of patients, and we do it as Dr. Jimenez said, with preventive measures, information by telephone, which is a very good measure, addressing patients to uh, uh, urgent ambulatory care centers and sending ambulances to uh, uh, send them to the, the appropriate hospital. Uh, in the middle is the heart, which is the, the uh, ED in the hospital, and the output uh, is rising capacity in both the uh, human uh, model and in the system model we must uh, rise capacity of beds. So that's just uh, playing a bit with the uh, two similitudes that we have in, between human and the reality emergency model. Thank you, Santiago. Next slide, please. So, the, um, the Bayebron Hospital is a general public and teaching and, and very important research center hospital. We have a thousand uh, of beds and we receive uh, about 200,000 patients in the ED department uh, per year. We, our admission rate has 11 or 12 percent. Next slide. Uh, sorry, sorry. 
el, the, the, popula the population of, of Spain people it looks for innovation solutions and the okay the previous the previous, previous slide list, the previous 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 one thank okay. you and one one good thing that can be bad uh, because population relies in hospital case care and specialty in ED effective means increased patient inflow to ED. Next slide, please. Okay. The specific measure reduce uh, patient flow by uh, prevention programs like vaccinations, especially the risk to risk population in winter, and in summer, uh, high temperatures, reducing systems in nursing homes. General recommendation and a specific problem for the citizens and endemic pathology as such as chronic respiratory problems. Next slide, please. Another measure have uh, the information, advice and care provisions information about available health care service and if it's necessary sending a doctor for a home visit or addressing the patient to the most adequate involuntary care facility, especially to an involuntary urgent care center. When necessary, sending the patient to the hospital with an emergency or a regular ambulance depending on his case. Next slide, please. Our uh, emergency department worked very well, but uh, I have uh, different problems to make uh, this, our work very better. The main problem uh, is uh, uh, different staff members have uh, burned out. Uh, uh, poor coordination between ED and other centers, for example, for radiology, surgery, and amazing. And uh, edict processes can, can be, be faster and uh, no effective trace system. Next slide, please. The information of our system to identify the measure activity and the of overcrowding has an, an efficient meeting oversight and of a mission, staying in the search with the objective of shortening all the states. A high level of coordination with ED, providing information of free beds and taking care of patient disposition as soon as the patient is released from ED. Efficient elective surgery programs with no change in the screens. Next slide, please. Clear and comprehensive protocols regarding all the states of patients with ED. Effective triage systems, continuous evaluation system with times in each period, and staff flexibility and ability for high demand periods. Next slide, please. A big problem has one, uh, one uh, no beds available in the hospital and no bed available in, uh, in any other, some level hospital. Yeah. Next slide, please. That's capacity in hospital coordination with a meeting service. Previous establishes agreement with another facility to some hospital, like uh, acute uh, patients, current patients, nursing homes, and home hospitalization programs. So the integrated programs for eating overcrowding in hospital, that's where the established in 28 Nine was obtained both hospital and health system benefits. What is the hospital main goal? Uh, reducing crowding. And by your own hospital, I mainly thanks for free urgent care and voluntary center in the hospital vicinity. There is level four and three of the Canadian scale, treating in these centers and ambulances in flow to our ED has descended by 50%. What is the uh, benefit of shape? Like establishing an effective trace system in all EDs, a better understanding between ED and other service, the chase and home care planes, and short state units. Another conclusion, the information data system has account for a better knowledge and coordination for health resources. 
Yeah, thanks. Uh, has happened in building new ambulatory urgent care centers, better coordination between different levels of care, has stringing preventive programs, has promoted specialist primary care of elderly patients and persons with chronic disease, and finally, hospital ED utilization has popped by 20%. Thank you very much. That was excellent. Thank you. And I have to say, hearing these four views of e emergency medicine practice and the issues related to crowding um, is very interesting. There's many similarities, but there's also differences between our systems. Could I have uh, the last set of slides that begin putting it all together? Listening to uh, the various talks, uh, our systems do differ in some ways. It seems that Santiago and perhaps also Barcelona has a major problem uh, controlling input. And with the low admission rate, the high patient volumes, it does sound like the ambulatory care model and the ability to triage out of the emergency department is part of their solution. Uh, at, at my institution and in France with the very high admission rate and the limited inpatient beds, uh, clearly the output components are key. With all that said though, understanding the system, dissecting the pieces with a multidisciplinary group is clearly the beginning of finding solutions. The commonality in all four presentations is the emphasis on getting the hospital and healthcare system to understand all features, to have a strong leader at the top who can coordinate innovative solutions, and most important, a leader at the hospital or healthcare system level who's empowered to make change to promote forward patient flow that will improve patient safety. Uh, we've run out of time, and unfortunately, we don't have a uh, communication system that allows questions. However, uh, if you could please advance to the very last slide. Uh, the speakers today have all agreed uh, to have their emails posted, and we welcome comments, suggestions, uh, We'll all try and answer whatever questions are forwarded to us, and we are going to work together to see if we can transcribe the transcripts of the last uh, hour's presentations and provide an analysis of what took place today. Thank you very much. We have um, participants who have called in from as far away as Singapore, from South America, from Europe, from the states. I thank everyone for participating. I look forward to meeting everyone at some point in time in the future. Thank you.